Can you believe quarter one is already gone for 2021? It's time for a quarterly tune-up. Yep, you're going to get one today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 159. You can get all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Yeah, yeah Jen O'Brien, it's pretty amazing that the first quarter of 2021 is already over. Where the heck does time go? I don't know, but uh, wow. Uh, as we record this, it's the first day of April, April Fool's Day. No, it's not an April Fool's. First quarter is really behind us. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and we are moving forward. We're still in, I don't even know what we're in anymore. I'm, I'm like, oh, we're in pandemic, COVID-19 fatigue. People are getting shots. I guess you're you're about to go get your shot. Yeah, my, my age bracket came up today and I was on the old internet at 510 this morning and bing, bam, boom was super easy. Good. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, here's the great thing. I get to, I can walk to get my shot. Where <laughs> I are you mean, going? literally down the street, so. Is it, is it down there at the Rouse or something? Yeah, down, I'm going to CVS, I'm getting my CVS shot. Right so on. it's like, I cannot uh, ask for anything more. <laughs> so well, it's, awesome. it's all good, but you know what? We're moving forward. I don't know. I'm just so go with the flow at this point. It's, you know, I just got to, got to take a nice trip. I visited family in Georgia. You know, still most people wearing masks, except for outside. You know, we, we, we played it safe. We were outside. We ate at in outside places, but it just depends on where you are in the country. It's so interesting. Huh? You're going to have to give, after we do our, our segment today, you're going to have to give a little recap of the Gibbs Garden there in Atlanta because the pictures you sent me were freaking in, incredible. Oh, that They're place beautiful. is awesome. We, we got to go explore. There's a lot of cool things to do in the North Georgia area for sure. Um, you know, so so that's kind of where we're at and you know but here's the good news for all you real estate folks that listen to our podcast even when since this thing you know we're going into year two here of the COVID-19 let's get it under control and real estate is still there and there's mm -hmm. opportunities you know it is it's almost gotten even tighter in the market with uh, inventory uh, it's crazy what I'm hearing in Florida and Nevada regarding low inventory and just how people are overbidding and you know, this is going to go on, in my opinion, for a few, you know, several more months until right. we get the economy recovered, which will cause the interest rates to move up a little bit. More people feel comfortable putting their homes on the market. We just have the tenant eviction has been extended to June. I just feel like we've got this crazy perfect storm coming in the second half of the year. I, I totally agree with you. You and, know, you know, Jen, you know, a year ago today, we started the 30-day work from home challenge. Oh so, that's exactly you know, that's amazing. Right one year ago today well you know you're still probably working a lot from home right and you but you're still getting out there and obviously the key is list to last right list to last in any market we've been talking on the podcast we talked about five ways to get listings last week and but this week we were going to chat about it's a, it's time to do a quarterly review and so let's dive in and we'll talk a little bit about this you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. And if you haven't already gotten in the past or downloaded our 2021 My Path, this is something that Matt and I do every year. It's a bit of a workbook, if you will, of, of a whole bunch of cool documents. And one of them that's in there is the quarterly review. That's right. And if you are listening, you know, make sure you go to the show notes today. What what are we on again? I always never I don't forget I always forget our number. We are on 159. On 159. So go to wbnlpodcast.com 159 for this quarterly tune up and you'll be able to download a copy of this uh, guide along with the instructions which are very detailed on how to use it. And so Yeah. If you're if you're listening, so just just listen up for a second. If you if you're watching on YouTube, then obviously you're going to see what I'm about to share. Uh, and I'm just going to explain what we have in here for this guide um, in this in our uh, 
what I'm trying to say is the, let me just kind of review what's in this my pack. Yeah, go through it again. One. And honestly, it's it's a, allows you to start at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, actually, and do a year in review. But there's some useful things in here right now, besides what I'm going to focus on today, which is the quarterly tune-up, an area for you to just brainstorm and mind map and brain dump. I think that's a powerful thing to do on a quarterly basis to stop. And that's what I'm going to walk you through the steps of how do you, you know, realign, refocus, reconnect on the things that you need to do and, and take a look at what happened in your last quarter. But there's a lot of things in here for long-term goals. There's some things in here about areas that you're focusing on that sort of has an overlay of the feng shui bagua map, which I think is pretty cool. A couple other little sheets for you. You know, we call it the, you need to focus on your business, personal and fun, maybe some travel. Got a little travel in, right? So yeah. you could do something, you could do some local staycations, go explore, get up and get out and explore things that are safe and outside. I've been trying to fit some of those in. I know you have too, Matt. Yeah, whenever possible. Uh, we call that the 333. And then if you're working on projects, we've got a cool worksheet that allows you to just sit down and jot all the things out about what's the project, what's the budget, what do you need, what's your action plan? You know, you just got to get things out of your head and get it organized so that you can work on things. And then there's a, a, a roadmap. Again, we're using the threes, three, three, three. So personal business, get up and get out, which lets you take each. So, okay, you've already got January, February, and March. So now it's time to focus on April through December for what are areas or things that you really want to focus on for, and I'm just going to say the next quarter, but some of these planning sheets are in here for you to plan events and things that you need to do. You know, getting back to that last sheet, if you, if you filled, if you did this back in January and filled it out for the whole year, still revisit it because you know, there's, Absolutely. this has been a, a, to Jan's point about looking at things on a quarterly basis. It's so important, especially with what we've all been through in the last year. Uh, it was a kind of a mentally challenging year for a lot of people. Well, for everybody, whether it's some level and you know, what you thought back six months ago, three months ago, <laughs> one month ago, probably is going to be a little different than what you're thinking today. So critical Absolutely. that you just redo it. And it's powerful to set some goals for yourself. I mean, you know, uh, in those areas, I mean, not just business goals, but just things that you want to work on, projects right. that you're trying to do, things that you want to get accomplished this year. You know, we're, we're trying to make these adjustments to what the world looks like for you now in your business and in your life. Uh, we have a 30, 60, 90 day guide in here, which is just, it's just a way I, I use this. A I use this kind of a thing all the time for what are prospects or sales or thing, or you can even use this any things that you're, that are 30, 60 or 90 days out, meaning maybe clients that are coming up for you or right. projects that you want to bring in that you need to work on. And then there is a project pipeline, which we, which is the do doing done. So for all these major projects that you're working on that take not just a task, it takes one, one thing to get done. But if a, a project is something that has two or three more steps in it, that are going to require some of your focus time. And I like this do doing done idea where you list all the things that you want to do. Okay. What are you currently working on? So you can kind of move them from the do stack to the doing and then the done. And if you, if you use this as an ongoing tool, you can do what I'm about to talk about here and take a look at uh, my first step is to reflect on the things in the last quarter that 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 were victories, that were things that you completed. Right. Yeah, so super important. Done board is going to help you with that. Right. And now we get to the 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 Q1, um, a couple tools that we have. We have a daily roadmap, which is a, meant to be a bit of a journal. Uh, you know, I, I it's so interesting. I um, have a variation of this, but I, I just, you know, pull this back out and I'm like, you know what? I designed this because I like it and I need to get back to just going ahead. And as I look at this right now, I'm going to print these out. If you're, you can, they're fillable, PDF fillable form. So you can do it online. But I sometimes like the, the journal. Like I recently purchased a book, a hardcover book, because I just wanted to be able to get back to a hardcover book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there is some value in having that. But anyway, it allows you to track your morning ritual, what you want to focus on just today. And I do this all the time. I always have a massive list of things to do. And I just want to focus on something today that's going to you know, take a couple things off the master list and put it into today. Uh, we have a thing here called my daily three, which are what are the three things if you just you need to do each day that moves your business forward? That's generally around prospecting or uh, uh, putting somebody, you know, business in your pipeline and so forth. And then it has a place for you to list connections, calls that you need to make, priority tasks for today, a place for you to reflect evening and what's your 
what you're grateful for. So it's like the full approach to a daily tracker, if you will. And then you can do the same thing with a weekly, which is you can set goals for the week, break it down into the day. And now where we're at today is the quarterly tune up. Right. And all so, that, by the way, fits perfectly into your perfect week, right? It's all interconnected. Mm -hmm. So these are the steps and there's a guide. There's a document in here that will help you follow this. And I want to add a few things to it because here's the key to doing this. And I, I started doing this a little bit this weekend too, just reflecting and what, you know, what, what have we already accomplished? That's where you start. So set aside one to two hours. And I'm going to suggest in this upcoming week, why? Because we're getting into the first week of the new quarter. Great. So it's time to reflect, refocus, realign so that you can do what you need to do to get on track again or to uh, you know refocus your attention for what you want to accomplish in Q2. But it starts with reviewing how did Q1 go for you. So really, I really recommend getting it. It's a mindset thing. So don't do this when you're multitasking and you've got the TV on. And I mean, this is a really good exercise to just spend where you set aside some time, maybe you go somewhere. You need to be alone to do this. Okay? You really do. Maybe put on some cool music or something. Matt, you always have some really cool mm -hmm. playlists that you get really from YouTube, right? You like listening. Yeah, almost to always from YouTube. It's funny, yeah. But get into a space, you know, find a little bit of your sacred space, whatever that is. It might even be somewhere outside, you know, take it with you and and, and let me walk you through the steps here. And there, this is all in our show notes along with this down, these downloads, which is this massive My Path 2021. And I just really want to tune in a little bit now into the tune-up. And, and then you're, you're – and I really recommend doing it outside. I like when I do this outside. You and yeah. I used, used to do a lot of this because you could be doing a little work and then maybe go take a little walk. And I, I'm actually going to do this this weekend to do this exact exercise because I feel like we have so many focus areas. You know, we have – uh, for me, I have our company and, and I have real estate team and I'm starting it going here. You're, of course, supporting me in that. So there's different goals and different projects and different things and all these aspects of the things that we're working on. Right. Right. Completely. So uh, I really recommend maybe considering outside so you can take a walk. Sometimes when you go and you get into that zone, that's when things will flow out and you'll really make this be not just a little check the box. I did my quarterly business checkup. OK. Yeah, it's it's literally getting out of your normal routine. If you if you work every day at the same desk and you do the same thing, and now this is just a part of the same thing, you don't have a clear, fresh mind. If you have to get away from it, you have to go. Like Jan said, getting out is perfect because you, yeah. it's, it already stimulates your you know your creativity and your mind anyway. It does. It'll let you relax a bit to let some stuff come in and just see what happens if you've never tried this. Okay. At the very you, least, go to a different room. <laughs> absolutely. Or yeah. go outside or go in your backyard. Okay? Yeah. Do something. Yeah. So start by writing down all the accomplishments and the victories. Okay. What the, and this is so important. You know, we always talk on the podcast and I do it in coaching. I usually do it at the end of the year to celebrate your successes. Well, I suggest that you do this on a quarterly basis. We all have a tendency, especially if you're driven type A high D personality to focus on what you didn't accomplish. Now we're going to get to that in a second, but right now it, the very first thing to do to get you in the right mindset is to write down what did you accomplish? Now, if we were to sit and do that, which we need to do this actually, Matt, I think we should do a little of this because we have accomplished a lot and you know me, I'm like, Oh my God, there's so many things to do. But if we sit back and look, we've been writing content, we've been recording, no. A whole new quarter. This honestly has been the most productive, the most productive quarter we've had in a couple of years, probably. Honestly, if we if you if we should do this because it would blow our minds, I bet. Yeah. So you write that down, and it's great if you have a partner or somebody to do this with that. And you may need to get yourself going with this and let the stream of consciousness come. And then you might need some little things like go back and look at your your calendar. Go back and look at your list if you keep your list on you know what you've accomplished. I generally tend to throw them away. Me too. Um, but it's like you know you can go back and you can see. Look at what you set for your goals for this year and how you're doing so far. Write down everything, not just for business. Anything that you were wanting to work on. Did you have projects where you're working on some things for your business? You know how we're always talking about working on and in your business. Well, this is actually uh, working on the business you know, time block that you're going to set for the week. That's right. But what did you do? Did you accomplish things? Did you put some business systems in place? Those are successes and take time to celebrate those and put you in the space of why that's so important. Cause it's moving you forward. Any mm -hmm. little step that you took, took and uh, accomplished is a success. I mean, 
it's moving you forward and getting you closer. You know, we all have a tendency to procrastinate and so forth, but do that first. Next, I want you to write down what, you know, you can record your sales and do go back to your business plan and do all that, do all that very kind of right brain stuff. Okay. I always get that confused. Right brain is. That's right. It's creative. No, I wanted, I meant to say left brain. Yeah. So left brain is the numbers. And like I said, I was going to have this many sales and this many, you can do that too. I, I obviously you need to. So I, I really want you to get more into the right brain space and uh, not just all left brain when you do this exercise. So uh, right is creative. I don't know why I have an issue with that. I guess I'm on the line between the two maybe. All right. So after celebrating your victories, let's write down what's working for you, meaning things that you committed to doing that are you're like, you know what? These are things that are good. And here's why. What are you are most excited about? Uh, things that are happening in your business and personally. All right. That's a little more of the positive that you're focusing on. Yes. I'm on the right track. This strategy that I've employed, you know, to work on doing YouTube videos is definitely the way I want to keep going. You know, I like this, this is the approach. Um, So you get that all written down. Then next you want to reflect on what's not working. So if you decided that you were going to do commit to an expired program or, whatever. Okay. I want you to write down what's not working for you. And this is really important. You need to spend some time on why is it not working? Because it could simply, I want you to evaluate. This is a self-reflection. Is it not working because you didn't put any time or effort into it? Your mindset's not wrapped around it. You know, is that the real reason? Maybe you procrastinated and you said you were going to get to it. Or is it truly something that is just not right for you to do? Like it's not something that you're going to do. And if you're not, if you're not committed to it, take it off the list. Right. Replace it with something that you're going to focus on. Stop beating yeah. yourself up about something. I was just going to say those words. Do. Don't beat yourself up for something you know you're not going to want to do or you're ever going to do. That's just crazy to keep that on there. And sometimes you're putting like, so for example, you know, for me, it's the it's the ever popular daily ritual when I do my daily ritual, it really works for me. But guess what? I'm not consistent with it. And I don't know. I have my own, I have to do my own self-reflection on why do I not do that every single day? Because I know what is good for me. I, I'm hit or miss. I do parts of it. I know if I'm committed to that on and on, and it's just discipline. That's really what it is. It's the discipline to get up every day and do something, meditate, take a walk, uh, you know, do those things. And, And when I do that, I know I'm, I have more energy, I feel better. Yep. So it's a struggle. I will, I continue to say it's a struggle. So here I am saying it's a struggle. Therefore it's a struggle. So no, it's not a struggle anymore. That would be an area of, of no, I'm not taking it off my list of things to do. It does work for me. I, so the other part of this piece of the of a question in the area is I am recommitted to my daily ritual and taking care of myself. Right. I have been taking care of myself, but not to what, not to the level that I know that, that if I just, and I don't, it's not difficult. I mean, it's not like I'm talking about take an extra couple hours in the morning, you know, that's right. no, it's 15, 20 minutes. So anyway, that's the whole, what's not working for you. And do you need to take it off the list? Are you really wanting to recommit to whatever it is? Remember business and personal. Okay. So your personal professional, but I just was mentioning things personally. Why? Because it impacts your business. You know, how you take care of yourself. And you take care of your health and wellness and well-being and your personal development. That only makes you a better, you know, person all around for your clients, for your family, and so on. All right. Next is what course corrections are you committed to making? Uh, if you do, you need to just make a slight adjustment. It's a little bit of what I was just talking about. But do you need to totally revamp something that you were doing? Maybe it's not 100% working the way you wanted it to. So may- this is a time to go, you know what? I think I might do this or that or take this off the plate and put more energy into this. Energy and or resources. So if you're putting dollars into something and you're, you spend three months, are you getting results from that? Because uh, maybe this is the time that you're going to go all in or on something that's working or give it some more time if it's not a little bit, but you're, you know, you haven't really focused on it or maybe you need to take real dollars, your energy, meaning your personal energy, because it's your effort, plus your money, and uh, put it into something that's going to work for you that you like to do. I think that's really a very good point, because a lot of times we will not purchase something because we just don't think we either have the money or want to invest in something, you know, right away. But if you get into a place where something is starting to work, you know, and that would make it work exponentially faster, you know, it's time to reevaluate those those dollars spent. I do that all the time. Yes, that is, a, that is say, a problem I have. I do it all the time. 
I get, I'll, and then when I do it, I'm like, why didn't I do this six months ago? I know. You know? I know. And on my list of things is uh, I am not strong on doing good with taking care of my personal finances. That's always my little thing. And it's on my list, you know, to to get my taxes squared away, to to re, redo my personal and business budgets, which those are things I'm committed to taking care of this weekend because I just want it off my plate and I know what the game plan is. I always feel like great. I'm kind of like the king, the king of the workaround is I always kind of feel that way. You know what I mean? And I never, there's always a better solution, but I found another way to do it. So I could just go back and look at some of those things and then do the way that's probably easier. You know, and why, why this is so important to take this time and to evaluate, do you have too many things on your plate? This is why I'm always talking about the magic of three, right? Your data, if we're just talking about business principles, I mean, you always have projects and other things that you're working on and you're working on your business systems and all these things take time. This is the point I'm making. All we have is our time, to be honest, that is it. You know, I mean, you can go put money into things and you can hire people to help yeah. you. But when it comes down to it, you still have to make decisions every single day. Where are you putting your most valuable asset for you personally and your business? And that is your time and your energy and your focus. And I have a tendency, and I'm getting better at this, to just take so I try to do too many things. I always have. And I'm really working on refining that and getting it down to what are the areas that are going to be the most effective for me, for my business, for my life. And be good with that and choose ones that I like. And I'll give you an example of that right now because everything does take time. And, I'm, you know, we've got our team going in, in Vegas and they're, it's great. We have just a couple little things to tweak for our systems there. Now I'm getting things going here. Well, it's like starting from scratch. Yeah. I looked at my list of things to do. I've got a, I really want to create a YouTube channel here and I'm looking to hire a couple people who are good at doing that and they can continue to add content. So I went and researched and found a website that I want to be able to set up this little hyper local because it's right in alignment with everything that we're teaching. And, but guess what? It's going to be several hours of work to get it to the way I want. And then I'm like, Oh my God, I got to make the commitment to make that happen. But I know if I do not, if when I do that, then all the other things I know that I want to focus on or find some people to help me do that, then it's going to be great. Okay. Because it's going to help us generate business and it's going to be the example of, you know, what we mean by be that hyper local expert um, and you're leveraging video is what we want to be able to do. And we're using our channel as YouTube as an example. It's not that we don't have a presence on Facebook and all that, but we're not focusing on Facebook and I'm not focusing on Instagram. I want to focus on YouTube. And I want to leverage the YouTube videos to go and, or, you know, repurpose them for a blog. And then, you know, so then we have content as we're driving people to our website, which needs to be built. Which uh, reminds me, you asked me to switch those logos around and I have that fell off my list. I need thank to get you. that. And I, list today. You and I are going to chat about that because yeah. now that site's live now and it's horrible. It needs to be fixed. Um, yeah. So I need to get your input on it, but it won't take us long to get there. So no. this brings me to this final part. So you'll see. I like this start, stop, continue. I've just sort of talked about it through a little bit there, but the start, stop, continue exercise is the whole thing of what do you need to start that you haven't been doing? Okay. Because that wasn't on the list. I had to evaluate what was working, what's not working. Well, what are you not doing that you know you need to do? Uh, you know, and then we already mentioned what things you're going to stop um, if you need to, and then things that are working for you that you're going to continue. But the last part here is what I was just sort of talking about. So a project for me is to identify three to five. I always, I like three, five is cool, but don't do more than five. What are your three to five focus areas for Q2? And these can, and make sure something in the, is there for you personally. And these just are, these aren't really your goals. I mean, you already have your goals for the year. Those goals are there and you're doing the things to work on it. These are just, what are the three things you're going to focus on for the next quarter? Because if you put more than that, if you put 10 projects on your list, you're going to get, you're not going to get them done. So an example for me is I want that what my North Tampa real estate site up and running along with all the social media that needs to go with it. And, you know, that's a, that's a project that will be accomplished in quarter two. So when I get to the end of quarter two and we do this whole thing again, you can have this list of things that said my focus areas, you know, the things that I was going to work on in quarter two. Let me see how I did. Did I get distracted? Did I do them? So that I love a lot because it's like, you know, and for me, it's finishing, you know, our two courses. So we have sales builder will be finished in Q2 and so will business builder. Those are two courses we're writing right now. And, and there's so much effort and time. And we have a team of virtual assistants that help us that are awesome. 
we would it would take us six months to get another would, six months it, to get it would stuff. probably take longer than that this is a monumental uh it's job huge. yeah we met how many when we're talk about that like we're recording uh the training that we're doing now for 12 uh modules i mean oh, all it's gonna have how many videos would you say i mean oh my well it's good we'll about well, is, is, I, there'll be 150 videos by the time the whole thing is done yeah, and up. don't get scared if you want to we could come and learn our our program i mean we break them down into bite-sized pieces some of them are you know the overviews and the 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 two at the beginning and the end are like a minute two minutes but yeah. on average i'd say eight to ten minutes maybe some shorter some longer because they're just segments breaking down the the uh, core business systems and whether you're new, newer to the business or a, a seasoned pro, you never put your business systems in place on how you run everything, your sellers, your buyers, right. in houses. So farm. there's all of the video content, but there's another 120 plus documents that go along with all that and downloads. I mean, it's just, there's just a lot to it. So, yeah. so anyway, those are, so there's an example. I've just declared it on the podcast. Yeah. My uh, my O'Brien real estate team up and running here in this next quarter here in Florida with uh, maybe the goal would be to have at least two people that are working with us that, that want to similar to what we're doing in Vegas that maybe take some of the leads that we generate and we're coaching them and helping them. So if you're in the if you're in the central Florida area and you're looking yeah. for an opportunity, reach out and give me a call. That's awesome. Uh, so anyway, th that's what I mean by the you know three to five focus areas and then get yourself back on track. But do really highly recommend that you take the time to carve out a one or two hours in the next week. We'll check in with you next week when we do the podcast, see how you guys are doing. And always give us comments. There's a place for you to comment over on our uh, WBNLcoaching.com uh, where we post. There's a place for people to comment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You mean the podcast? Yeah, sure. WBNL podcast. You, that'll take you right to it. Or you can go to WBNL coaching, click on the podcast button. That'll get you there, too. That's right. Right. All right. Yep. So that's really what I wanted to chat about today, Matt Emerson, uh, regarding the quarterly tune up, your Q1 tune up, and getting yourself realigned, refocused for uh, Q2. As always, good stuff. Thank you, Jenna Bryan. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 159 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. That was really good stuff, Jana Brand. It is good to take a little time to look back. And we're at this place right now. It's funny. It's it, here in California, we've had a very mild kind of winter, which has been nice. And the weather's been kind of cool, but not freezing. And it, it, I swear, it's like spring sprung. And all of a sudden, this place is freaking alive, you know, yeah, as far as as the flowers and the trees and the I mean today it's gonna to be 90 so it's 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 gonna be hot today but uh it's gonna it's gonna taper back down but it's just so funny how in within a span of one week it's just like a whole new world you know and it is it, it has made me think oh my gosh how we're in April where, 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 where how did this happen you know and it's good to reflect and see what's going on in the last week but don't you you love the spring I know you do I love oh. the spring I love the fall those are my yeah. favorite uh, months absolutely so yeah, on that note, you were up in Atlanta um, this past week uh, weekend, and you went oh, to the garden. Yeah, yeah it, it's amazing. There's a botanical gardens up in North Georgia. Ball ground is the city area, and uh, a really interesting, you know, family Gibbs that built this for years now, and it's just like I forget how many acres, but it's a ton of acreage. With the, you just can stroll around and be there for several hours, and you you need to. It's only open. It's it's only open through. I don't think it's open during the winter months. Yeah, uh, probably but not. It, but there, but it is gorgeous. We went through. Right now, the daffodils had just sort of peaked, um, but there were tulips and daffodils. But what's what I loved was the Japanese garden. So yeah, elaborate Japanese garden with all types of, you know, ponds and the trees. There's Japanese maples throughout. Uh, gorgeous trees and flowers it was just amazing and so you can you, you could go back there like between march and and now in may and the, you know azaleas were blooming yeah so many different things but you, you watch that and you can come in and 
uh, you know, you can even get like an annual pass uh, and come back. But man, it looked like it would be amazing in the fall. I would like to go back in the fall because the it's called the Japanese the Japanese Gardens. It's a color fest. It's like the pictures from the fall are just literally the fall colors. I bet. The falls throughout where all those trees are. But it was gorgeous right now with the spring. Beautiful day. It had been raining a lot in our visit, and this was the first beautiful day. We went, and it was only, you know, it was, it was about 35, 40 minutes from where my sisters live in the Canton area, Canton, Georgia. There's so much beauty in North Georgia. The, the mountains are up there. There's so many cool little towns and places to go. But Gibbs Garden is definitely something that you need to put on your list if you're visiting Georgia. Hey, you talk about weather. You sure hit the weather gamut from tornadoes to beautiful spring weather, for crying out loud. Oh, yeah, we had some trip. massive lightning. In fact, we were, I was sitting out with my sisters and uh, out on their little screened in porch as we call it in Florida here the Lanai. Your Lanai. And uh, oh my gosh, I had never heard a crack of lightning and thunder at the same time that it felt like it had struck right by us. And it had, and we went onto the weather apps and lightning, you know, they were having so much lightning that, you know, how they can track on the weather channel and so forth, how many positive lightning yeah. strikes, meaning like it hit the ground or it hit something. We were for sure it hit something. It was scary. We just jumped up and we went inside. And you were literally looking for Thor. For Thor. <laughs> I, I crouched. I was like, what was that? I felt like something that was going to crunch on our head. <laughs> it's it like the, Avenger, the Avengers are here. Where is Thor? Yeah, seriously. And it, and it was, you know, that's the weather that you get in the southeast. It was, uh, we had yeah, tornado totally. watches. There was a tornado warning, but it was not in our area. There were definitely a couple tornadoes that touched down. I think, I think to the northeast of us. Uh, totally. Um, so crazy stuff. I was watching it. I was on the Wink Weather app that we that yeah. we are a big promoters of here on the WBNO podcast. No, I, I that app. It was funny. And that I think is a Fort Myers channel or something. It is. is. Wink do. <laughs> Whatever you can. I'm sure there's a local one for that area, but you got me on that. I always go to the Wink app, no matter where I am at. And the Wink app works yeah. wherever you are because I were I I use the Wink app here in California all the That's time. That's funny. Well, so. I know. It's brilliant. Go to that radar. But anyway, great. It was a great visit. It's always fun. It's a you know, seven hour drive, but I, don't, I didn't mind the drive. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the best things to do when you're driving is to listen to podcasts, okay? Or listen to a book on, uh, you know, an Audible or something. And I got so caught up on so many podcasts. It was awesome. I felt the time flew by. I, I, I haven't stopped to listen to as many podcasts recently, so it was wonderful. Yeah, when Daniel Bryan ever did that. When Jan O'Brien ever does any traveling, you just know that all of us, you know, the next week is going to be, hey, I heard of, I've got this new idea. I know, or I've got something that I need to focus on. Yeah, so we should honestly, be doing this. I did. I just bought a book because of one of the things I've listened to, yeah. and I'll, I'll be coming back and talking about that one uh, later uh, in a future podcast and That's share cool. a couple of books. I have an idea of updating, uh, Matt and I updating uh, things that we recommend for resources and reading, and a couple things like that. So we'll. Come on back to the podcast. We always got some fresh content for you. That's very awesome. excited about where we're moving in 2021 on so many levels. And it's all about helping you reach your goals and accomplish what you want and to have fun while you're doing it. That's right. right. That's, that is the, the, our main focus, really. I mean, come on. It, all this stuff is great, but we if you're not having a good time and you're doing it, you might as well not be doing it. Now, as a reminder, everyone, we do coach tips every Monday, tech tips on Tuesdays, and Canva tips on Wednesdays in our private Facebook group. If you are not a member of our group, please head on over to Facebook and search for WBNL Wanderers Club and join our group. We have a lot of fun doing those, and there is a already a plethora of information uploaded, uploaded into the guides. Well, will be uploaded into the guides as that is going to be on my list my list for q3 or q2 of things that need to be get done on a weekly basis but there's a lot of information up there so don't miss out on any of that and you know what if you were listening to our podcast today and you were like oh maybe i should have had a business plan for 2021 yeah because maybe you haven't done that yet <laughs> we have you we have you covered there too just go over to wbnlcoaching.com forward slash store and you can download our free uh business plan mini course uh which is packed once again with a lot of information and downloads that will help you build your plan because you know what quite frankly it's, it's not too late to build your plan you know, maybe you're going to have a calendar year plan or maybe you're going to have a yearly plan or who knows what. Maybe you're going to have a fiscal year plan, whatever. It doesn't have to be January to January. So just make sure you plan. Right just on. Yeah. 
Anything else, Jenna Brand? That's it. I say just go do it. Do your review. Set goals if you haven't. Just do it for the next nine months. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. As we always say, get up, get out. Mask up, people, because there's that scary talk about a fourth wave, and we do not need that, even though people are getting vaccinated. So please still remain safe and be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>